Hi, I'm Ben Goodyear, Vicar of the Parish of Fernhill. Welcome to our virtual service today. Coming up, we've got music from our parish musicians and choir, as well as from St Martin's scholars. Daisy is going to be preaching, continuing our series of learning from women in the Bible, and Jill is going to be leading our service. So as I hand over to Jill now, I pray that you'll meet with God in a special way. Amen. Hello. Hello. Well, welcome. You're welcome. 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 Hello. Welcome. 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 Hello and a warm welcome to our virtual worship service here in the parish of Herne Hill. I'm Jill, one of the associate vicars here, and it's good to welcome you, especially if you're new or visiting us online. We begin our service in prayer, reminding ourselves of why we're here. Join with me if you will. We are worshipping together wherever we are, as the family of God in our Father's presence, to offer him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive his holy word, to bring before him the needs of the world, to ask his forgiveness of our sins, and to seek his grace, that through his Son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves to his service. Amen. Today is Trinity Sunday, when we remember and celebrate God as Father, Son and Holy Spirit. So our first hymn is a traditional Trinity hymn of praise. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Let's sing.
Now we come to pray in confession. We've just sung to God as holy and perfect in power, love and purity. This is the time to reflect upon how we haven't lived up to God's ways of holiness, love and purity. Instead, sometimes we've been unloving and selfish and definitely, definitely not filled our minds with holy, pure and godly thoughts, but have been maybe angry, hateful, greedy, selfish. There are things we've all said or done or thought, things we regret, things we're ashamed of and that we need to say sorry to God for. So in an attitude of humility, we'll have a moment of quiet to recognise those things before we pray the confession together. And so let's pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. May the Father forgive us by the death of his Son, and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. So now it's time to learn from the Bible, the next in our series on what we can learn from the lesser known women in the Bible. Today, Jehosheba. Errol is reading from Two Chronicles and then Daisy is preaching. And after that, we respond with songs of praise. The reading today comes from Two Chronicles 22, verses one to 12. The people of Jerusalem made Isaiah, Jehoram's youngest son, king in his place, since the raiders who came with the Arabs into the camp had killed all the older sons. So Ahaziah, son of Joram, king of Judah, began to reign. Ahaziah was 22 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem for one year. His mother's name was Athaliah, a granddaughter of Omri. He too followed the ways of the house of Ahab, for his mother encouraged him to act wickedly. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord as the house of Ahab had done, for after his father's death they became his advisers to his undoing. He also followed their counsel when he went with Joram, son of Ahab, king of Israel, to wage war against Hazel, king of Aram at Ramoth-Gilead. The Arameans wounded Joram, so he returned to Jezreel to recover from the wounds they had inflicted on him at Ramoth in his battle with Hazel, king of Aram. Then Hazael, son of Jehoram, king of Judah, went down to Jezreel, to see Joram, son of Ahab, because he had been wounded. Through Isaiah's visit to Joram, God brought about Isaiah's downfall. When Isaiah arrived, he went out with Joram to meet Jehu, son of Nimshi, whom the Lord had anointed to destroy the house of Ahab. While Jehu was executing judgment on the house of Ahab, he found the officials of Judah and the sons of Isaiah's relatives who had been attending Isaiah, and he killed them. He then went in search of Isaiah his men captured him while he was hiding in Samaria. He was brought to Jehu and put to death. They buried him, for they said, He was the son of Jehoshaphat, who sought the Lord with all his heart, so there was no one in the house of Uzziah powerful enough to retain the kingdom. When Athaliah, the mother of Uzziah, saw that her son was dead, she proceeded to destroy the whole royal family of the house of Judah. But Jehosheba, the daughter of King Jehoram, took Joash, son of Ahaziah, and stole him away from the among the royal princes who were about to be murdered, and put him in, and his nurse in a bedroom. Because Jehosheba, the daughter of King Jehoram, and wife of the priest Jehoiada, was Ahaziah's sister, she hid the child from Athaliah, so that she could not kill him. He remained hidden with them at the temple of God for six years, while Athaliah ruled the land. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, 
This sermon series is on women in the Bible, and yet after the first 10 verses of this reading, you might be wondering, who is this woman we're talking about? Jehoshaphat, the woman in this story, doesn't appear until verse 11, and she doesn't speak. She is silent throughout the story. And you might wonder why I'm even preaching on her, why we even picked this passage. Well, the purpose of this sermon series is to explore women who are less represented in the Bible and lesser known in our collective Christian thought and what they can teach us. So Jehoshaphat is a perfect example of this kind of woman. Her story begins with the story of her family, like most of our stories do. Jehoshaphat's brother, Isaiah, became king after the death of their father, Joram. Isaiah, like his father, Joram, was a cruel and violent king. And after Isaiah's death, his mother, Atalia, just like her husband and son, wanted power. So she took it, and to ensure that nobody contested her rule, she attempted to get rid of all of the heirs to the throne. One of these heirs was Joash, the son of Isaiah and Jehoshaphat's nephew. As we heard in our reading, she rescued him and hid him to protect him from death. Jehoshaphat's husband was a high priest, and so they hid Joash in the temple, where presumably the queen wouldn't come looking for him. Jehoshaphat was brave in saving Joash's life. She went against the patterns of her family's behaviour to protect him. Her family was full of messy people who made messy choices. It would have been easy for her to make those choices too. It would have been easy for her to let Joash be put to death and to avoid this whole messy situation out of self-preservation. I wonder how hard it was for her to avoid falling into those familiar and familial patterns. I wonder how often we catch ourselves behaving like the people around us. My dad often jokes that my older sister and I have the exact same mannerisms. We talk the same, we laugh the same. And I didn't notice it until one Christmas, we were all sat around the table, opening our Christmas crackers and reading the jokes. And my sister and I got the same joke and did it in the same silly voice. We are all influenced by the people around us. And sometimes those influences can be fun and positive and help us to become better people. But sometimes those influences can teach us to behave in a way we know deep down isn't right. But in Jehoshaphat's case, she decided to ignore those influences and instead to step out in what Trevor called a couple of weeks ago, holy boldness and save a child's life in spite of the great risk to her own safety. Jehoshaphat's story reminds me of how important it is to be brave when we see things in our world that aren't right. The 25th of May was the one year anniversary of the murder of George Floyd, an event which was recorded by a 17 year old girl called Darnella Fraser. If not for her video, this would have been swept under the rug and the police officer would have gotten away with it. Her bravery and the protests, campaigning and petitions that followed were an outcry of people all over the world that we cannot and should not look away when faced with injustice. But being brave can be really scary. Joshua 1.9 reminds us, be strong and courageous, do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. This doesn't mean that we can never be afraid, but it means that even when we're afraid, God is with us and he can help us feel brave. He can give us boldness and he stays with us even when things get really hard. And with him by our side, we can do strong and brave things because it is his mighty strength that makes us strong. There is always more work to be done to make the world a safer place for all people. And sometimes that task looks too big to face. But as Jehoshaphat's story reminds us, we don't have to fix every problem or solve every issue. We can just start with the people around us. There is a popular quote from the Talmud, which is a Jewish book of wisdom and teaching that helps me remember that I don't have to fix everything, but I do have to help where I can. It reads, do not be daunted by the enormity of the world's grief. Do justly now. 
Love mercy now. Walk humbly now. You are not obligated to complete the work, but neither are you free to abandon it. This quote draws on a bit of Micah, Micah 6, 8, which reads, He has told you, O man, what is good and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice, to love kindness, or in some translations, mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Saving Joash's life didn't magically get rid of any injustice that would come in his rule as king. It didn't immediately make sure that there would never be suffering again, but it mattered nonetheless because his life mattered and each and every one of us matter to God. In Ephesians 2.10, Paul reminds us that we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we might walk in them. Each and every person is valuable and important to God because he made us and he loves us. This is a piece of art I made for my dad when I was little. I am 24 now and my dad still has it because it's something that I made and like any proud dad, he wants to celebrate my accomplishments because he loves me. Our Heavenly Father is exactly the same. We are his artwork just as precious to him as my five-year-old drawing is to my dad. He is so proud of each and every one of us and we are all special and important to him. Not only are we special because he made us, but also because he has a plan for our lives, a unique plan for each and every person. And just as Paul writes here, these plans are good works, works to make our world a better and more loving place. Mr. Rogers, a beloved personality from the US, is often quoted as saying that when he was a child and he was overwhelmed by all the bad things happening in the world, his mother reminded him to look for the helpers. I think this is a really important thing to remember, that there are always people in the world doing good, working for good and helping others. I love this Instagram account. It's called The Good News Movement, and it is a page that highlights all of the amazing, brave and compassionate things people are doing all over the world to show love and support to each other. It's a great place to go and be encouraged, or if you're like me, have a happy cry. But God doesn't just ask us to look for the helpers. He asks us to be the helpers. How incredible is it that we get to be part of God's plan for the world? Not only can we pray and ask him for his help, but he asks us to go out into the world and be brave and kind and treat other people with the same love and kindness he feels towards us. Jehoshaphat shows that we have the power to make a difference in the world. Maybe it's inviting the person who always sits alone at school to have lunch with you or speaking up when you see someone being picked on. Maybe it's the hard work of unlearning the things you grew up thinking were okay, but now you know better. Maybe it's thinking more critically about how you spend your money. We at St Saviour's and St Paul's are a fair trade church because we believe it is important that the snacks and the treats we buy support local farmers and are made using ethical farming practices. Or maybe it's simply being brave enough to believe that you matter to God as well. This week, ask God to help you see an area in your life where you can make a difference in the world around you. Jehoshaphat's story makes me think of all of the brave people all over the world who work to make our world a better and safer place. From those working in government legislation and peacemaking efforts, especially now it brings to mind those working for peace and justice in Israel-Palestine but also those in our everyday lives who work to make our world a better place to live in. For the teachers, the parents, those who stand in the place of parents, for social workers and healthcare workers and street cleaners and bus drivers and all the people who day by day, like Jehoshaphat, can largely go by unnoticed. The beautiful thing about Jehoshaphat's story is she was brave and she was kind and she did the right thing, not for fame or for money, but because she knew what was right. She knew that the life of Joash was important to God and therefore it was important to her. 
She didn't know how the story was going to end, but she knew that his life mattered. I wonder how our lives and the lives of those around us would change if we consistently approached every single person, remembering that they matter to God and they should matter to us. Not because we want a pat on the back for being good, but because we know that knowing God means knowing that we are all loved by him. And through loving and helping, we can show his love in the world. I cast my life to Calvary, where Jesus bled. Thank you.
Thanks, everyone. We turn to God in prayer for others as Jenny leads us, finishing with the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray together. Let us pray. O oh God, the creator and preserver of all mankind, we pray for men of every race and in every kind of need. Make your ways known on earth, your saving power among all nations. Especially, we pray for all who serve in political leadership, for wisdom and compassion, especially for the disadvantaged. For the COVID-19 pandemic, for leaders, frontline workers and relief agencies to make wise and effective decisions. For everyone suffering the effects of the pandemic, in bereavement, sickness, loss of income. For healing, hope and relief. Especially for the crisis in India, for oxygen supplies and for all those bringing relief and hope for international cooperation about the pandemic and the COVAX programme, and also cooperation regarding climate change and counter-terrorism. For the many places where there is political instability or insecurity having terrible effects on the lives of people day to day, including in Israel and Gaza, Northern Ireland, Myanmar, Mozambique, Senegal, Tigray, Yemen, Mali and Nigeria. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your church throughout the world. Guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace and in righteousness of life. Especially we pray for our parish, for all our Sunday services in person and online, to enable us to worship God in spirit and truth and empower us how to live more godly lives of love and service. For all that's going on in the parish, including the Children and Youth Work Review, CAP Ministries and upcoming Job Club, that in fact started and uh, is going very well. We thank you for that. We pray for plans for our parish weekend away for messy church, for small groups restarting, for open church, for our church meetings and plans to open a cafe on Thursdays. Also for our parish aims to be a green and fair trade parish, to make a positive environmental in impact involving everybody from the smallest to the oldest in the congregation and to work towards racial justice and equality. And we pray for the Church of England's anti-racism task force to be truly effective. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your fatherly goodness all who are anxious or distressed in mind or body Comfort and relieve them in their need. Give them patience in their sufferings and bring good out of their troubles. Especially we commend to you those who are sick and suffering. Pray for your healing and your blessing, for your companionship in their journey. We pray for Alex, Amit, Anne, Daphne, Eileen, Gavin, Helena, Jennifer, Jessica, Julie, Mark, Mary, Peter and Tomris 
And we also pray for healing for the Black Lives Matter uh, act activist, Sasha Johnson, in intensive care in King's. And we lift to you all those who mourn and we give thanks for the lives of those they have lost. We pray that they will find blessing and peace um, in their loss. Um, and we pray for those who have lost Alistair, Tynus, Joyce, Hilda, Ger, Philip, Doreen, Madge and Bob. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now please will you join me in, the, um, in saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So it's now time for the notices. At our APCM annual parochial church meeting last week, we said thank you to Andrew Furman, our church warden, who has stepped down after five years of service. During this time, Andrew has served with real wisdom and sensitivity, thoughtfulness, care and godliness, and the entire parish is, in, is extremely grateful and appreciative. We elected uh, Becky Lewis and Geraldine Garner as our church wardens for this year, for this next 12 months. And we also thanked our outgoing PCC members, Maud, Lucy, Kemi and Amma. And we also elected three new PCC members, Sushil, Ade, uh, along with Becky, uh, who's automatically on the PCC as church warden. Please do pray for uh, the church wardens, for the PCC, for myself, as we work together to make decisions on your behalf for the life of the parish. This week, well rather should I say this weekend, there are there isn't a five o'clock service and there will not be a family service because of half term, but both of them will return on the 6th of June. As it's bank holiday tomorrow, St Paul's will not be open for private prayer, but it will be open on Thursday, 9am to 5pm for private prayer for those that wish to come. We'll also be having Zoom prayers Tuesday evening, 7.30 and on Thursday at 8am. The links are all on the website. I pray you have a fantastic week and hope to see you soon. Take care. God bless. Hi everyone, we are here to let you know about an exciting new project that our churches are starting and it's called Hope, Hope Cafe. Cafe. St Paul's has been open for private prayer for some time now on a Monday and a Thursday. So the team have decided that using an open church day to start a cafe would be a great idea. So in June we will be opening the doors to Hope Cafe on Thursdays, half past eight to 3 p.m. We want Hope Cafe to uh, live up to its name and be a place that is welcoming and warm and brings hope to everyone that walks through the doors. Whether it's a hot brew, something to eat and a chat or more specific help, where we'll be providing signposting, support and prayer, we want everyone to feel loved. So, if this is something that you think you could give your time to, please do come and chat to one of us if you are interested. Ask any questions to see if you like this, the sound of serving in this way. Or alternatively, you could email me at kelly at hernhillparish.org.uk. We would love to hear from you. Thanks so much, guys. Bye. Before our final hymn, we offer our gifts to God 
The money we may have given electronically and all the other gifts we offer to God, our attention, our affection, our allegiance, as well as our time and our energy. We do so with prayer. God of all goodness and grace, receive the gifts we offer and grant that our whole life may give you glory and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If you'd like to give to the work of St Paul's or St Saviour's, details are on the screen of how to give and on our parish website. In our final hymn, we sing of God's wonderful love. And can it be? Let's sing. So we've come to the end of our virtual service. We're glad that you've been able to join us. If you'd like to be with us again online during the week or every Sunday, details of everything going on are on the parish website. And if you'd like to get in touch, we'd love to hear from you, especially if you would like prayer or practical help, just email prayer at hernhillparish.org.uk. So we finish with a blessing for Trinity Sunday. God, the Holy Trinity, 
make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.